Hey guys, welcome back to Musings of Mavery, where today we're going to get some more Goblin Slayer action. So, last time where we left off, we finished an arc where the Goblin Slayer met with the Sword Maiden and helped her resolve her problems in her city by basically uh, helping her get rid of the goblins which she is traumatized by. And last episode, I commented on how the whole entire conclusion to the arc uh, especially in regards to the Sword Maiden's motives and whatnot, were kind of confusing. And later on, after going on the internet, it seems that a lot of people also agree with me. So a lot of people say that they had no trouble understanding it and whatnot, but others were like me who thought the dialogue seemed a little bit strange on what it did. Although I've still yet to uh, confirm whether it's a translation problem or a adaption problem basically so whether it was already not explained well in the source material or whether through adapting it to an anime form they skip some lines skip some parts skip some dialogue or it could even be a translation issue right so eh, it is what it is but anyways we finished that arc and now the goblin slayer is heading back to his i guess home base area right and as far as I know, there seems to, uh, since the anime adaption skips the chronological order of the original work, uh, lots of people are saying that right now we're supposed to go into a sort of like an epic conclusion where there's a large-scale invasion of goblins. So is that what's going to happen? Let's find out, right? So let's just jump right into the episode. And let us begin in three... Two, one, play. Hmm. Okay. So he did want to become an adventurer. Uh, is this like the War of the Gods? Who are you? Hmm. Oh, they just picked up right from the last episode. And here is the OP. So I'll see you guys in just a second. Hmm. So some more backstory for the Goblin Slayer. Oh, we saw this before. Huh, it is a backstory episode. Okay. 
Okay, so back at the farm. So they're still refusing to show his face. That was her uncle, not her father. Already? <laughs> oh yeah, he can't recognize him. It's funny. Okay, so he likes the guild girl? Oh, so she knows. These guys again?
Is this like a paladin archetype? Oh, or are they part of like the Royal Guard or something? Yeah, a paladin. Now, with the way that the series likes to name things, I wonder if we're going to see like, eh, hey, it's a priestess. If we're going to see like one, one person from each class type. <laughs> yeah, you... <laughs> oh? So here's the whole gang. Really? Sorry, but he's taking it for today. <laughs> oh, so now all. That looks good. Well, steak with cheese. Now that seems nice. Still though, I wonder what exactly is going to be the focus of this episode. And then Goblin Slayer is going to be like, no, there's no rest for me.
Shouldn't this have been done a long time ago? <laughs> well, this was a peaceful episode. I'm just waiting for, like, something to... Happen. Then he just go back. Oh, good for her. A drinking game? No, seriously, what is the focus point of this episode? <laughs> and there's the moon. Like, from last episode, I mentioned that uh, it seems like 99.9% .9 the goblins come from the green moon.
<laughs> I like their method of communication. I guess Cowgirl's been around her around Goblin Slayer for so long. She knows the best way to communicate with him. Oh, the hero. Okay, so the dwarf one. Damn. Those would be footprints. Well. So that was episode 10. Uh, quite a peaceful episode, I would say. Not really that much to talk about since nothing really happened, I guess. We start off the episode with a little bit more of the backstory of Goblin Slayer, or his past, but uh, it didn't give us any new information, we already saw that before. And also, apparently, <laughs> the heroes defeating the Demon Lord, so I thought that it was going to turn out to be like this big um, eventual clash between the two, where the Goblin Slayer unwillingly was drawn into the events surrounding the Demon Lord, but apparently not. They just resolved this side story by themselves, the heroes, so I don't know why it was even mentioned in the first place. Uh, unless there's, unless he wasn't really defeated, or some of his subordinates do include goblins, so that might come into play a little bit later. Um, besides that, yeah, I guess this is just another, it's similar, reminiscent of episode 8, I guess, where it's just really Goblin Slayer and his friends running around town and doing some errands, having a day off, I guess you could say. Um, and yeah, they're his friends, right? No, regardless of what, what Goblin Slayer was trying to say to Cowgirl, I think, you know, trying to be all macho and like, oh, they're useful companions, they're skillful, and blah blah blah. No, I think Goblin Slayer used them as friends, because otherwise, if what he said was true, uh, I guess it could apply for the Dwarf and the Lizard Man and the Elf, right? Because they are silver-ranked adventurers, but the Priestess isn't. She's barely like one level above Porcelain, even though I, I kind of forgot which the next one is. So basically level 2, and Goblin Slayer keeps her around, so it's definitely not just... Um, a matter of convenience, right? Of course, to him, slaying goblins will always be the first priority, but I do believe that he cares for them, his companions, as friends, right? Uh, what else would that we talk about here? Okay, so we kind of got like all all moody with uh, Cowgirl thinking about the future of Goblin Slayer. So I'm not really sure what she's trying to or what the message is trying to be conveyed here, I guess. Uh, like, just wondering what Goblin Slayer is going to end up doing once he can't slay goblins anymore. So, I guess that's an interesting... Uh, it's an interesting thought experiment, but at the same time, it's like so far out that it's not really... You can't really accomplish anything with this, by thinking about this, right? So we don't even know if there can be an eventual end to the Goblin Menace, or whatnot. So, 
from what we know, Goblin Slayer is gonna slay goblins until he can no longer slay he can no longer slay goblins. Even if he's an old man, I'm sure that he's gonna find some way to slay goblins if they haven't all been slain yet, right? So, yeah, whatever. Um, I did find a point about the uh, when the girl girl said that the adventurers, retired adventurers, were going to open a school or like sort of like a training camp for new adventurers. Um, yeah, that sounds like a very good idea, right? <laughs> um, it can definitely help uh, decrease the mortality rate of new adventures, which, again, I, I think I mentioned during that time already. You know, this should have been something that was done a long time ago, right? There's no reason why you can't have sort of like the, um, the passing on of experience from past adventures, right? There's no need for new adventures to just go in blindly uh, to face all these different perils. It would be much more efficient if somebody gave them some knowledge first, and so they could be more efficient, basically, right? So, again, I'm just kind of... The, the whole point of me uh, bringing this up is that I feel like this is something that should have been done a long time ago, right? Although it kind of goes in with my um, my complaint, I guess you could say, about how this Goblin Menace story point doesn't really make sense to me because this shouldn't be happening in the first place. They shouldn't have, they shouldn't be overlooked for such a long period of time and have to rely on someone like Goblin Slayer to uh, to take care of the situation. Right? If they really were such a big problem, everybody should have known and. Everybody should have warnings about goblins already. But, hey, if that happened, we wouldn't have the story, right? So, it is what it is. And finally, we end the episode with all of the different footprints, right? So, this uh, definitely means that we're going to be seeing the, I guess, the big-scale invasion in the next few episodes. So, this was speculated by a lot of people uh, on, the, on the interwebs. Um, apparently it's going to be epic, so looking forward to that, because this is apparently going to be sort of like a goblin army, instead of, uh, what Goblin Slayer usually does, right? He goes into a dungeon or whatnot and slays maybe, I don't know, 40, 50 goblins, and if this is an army scale invasion, I'm thinking, like, at least, at least a few hundred, right? Maybe even the thousands. Um, so yeah, let's see how Goblin Slayer's resourcefulness can help during that, in that kind of situation, right? Although, I guess it was kind of funny that, uh, you know, the way that Goblin Slayer discovered all these different footprints, they're not exactly being subtle, aren't they? Uh, you would think if they were scouts or something, they would take more care to cover their tracks. Although I guess the average goblin is stupid, and it's only through uh, surviving that they learn from experience, and I guess you could sort of say evolve, at least intelligence-wise. So, anyways, uh, like I said, not much more to talk about, a peaceful episode, I guess you can even say it's sort of like a filler episode, right? And uh, I believe this series has 12 episodes in total. Or maybe 13, so at the most we probably have two or three episodes to conclude the invasion, invasion arc and conclude this anime series. Is it going to have a second season? I don't know, maybe. But anyways, that has been Goblin Slayer episode 10. This has been your host Mavery, and I'll see you guys next time.